Okay, so welcome, Valamir. It's a pleasure to be here today talking to you. Welcome to you. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Let's begin by telling everybody why you're here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> That's a very good question. What are we doing at all here on the planet Earth? I mean, we humans, especially every individual, has to ask himself about about it. I mean, what is the purpose of life? That is my my point. Uh, for 60 years or even more, I was not able to name why I'm here, but now I know to reveal the nature of time. So that is, the, that is my contribution to civilization, to understand time, not only to understand the ontological uh, nature of time, but uh, also mathematical method of how from time we come to this material world, which is mass and space and energy. So space, mass and energy are actually, that is what, what I have discovered, uh, parts of time. Time is infinite and space is finite, but not of the, of the definite uh, magnitude. So it can be of any magnitude, but it is finite and also holds for uh, mass and uh, energy. So from that point, I uh, started uh, to create one completely new mathematics, which is in the same time, actually very old one. So what we have discovered as a mathematical principles of nature at the beginning of human history, that is what uh, I would call, call generic mathematics. So mathematics, which creates the reality and the mathematics uh, of kind, uh, uh, which we call, for example, statistics and uh, stochastics and uh, 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 probability. Those mathematics are of completely human product <laughs> products and uh, actually are not uh, exact because in nature you don't have statistics you don't have stochastics everything everything is completely and absolutely exact so what i try to do is to understand time and to create that mathematics which is applicable to, to physical constants and i did it so after 35 years of work i have completed uh, theory my theory, uh, and now I'm trying to do the experiment. So the theory is uh, ontological foundations of uh, mathematical physics of consciousness and constant present time. And now I have a theory, but I do not have the experiments, I mean laboratory experiments, which are proving it. So I'm trying to, to do that. And those are two experiments which are of, of extreme importance and which are actually the real uh, evidences. And the first one is uh, free energy. So it's a free energy ether resonant generator, which creates greatest output than input. So we get energy directly from ether and it is inexhaustible source of energy. That's one of the experiments I want to, to present now, firstly, firstly to, to achieve it, uh, uh, to, su to succeed, I mean, to, to make it. That's one experiment which would uh, completely cover the theory. And uh, the, other, the other is uh, uh, about the time traveling. And the other one is uh, something which I have already succeeded. So time traveling, I have it. And, uh, you can measure it. For example, you have, uh, uh, because what is actually time tra traveling? It's a, a controlled change of the time coordination of an object in additional field. What I do is, for example, I make one field with the Tesla, Tesla tra transformer, and uh, I put the object in that additional field, 
and I change the oscillation of object in relation to reference field, which is the field of earth or 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 uh, or or the or the field of uh, <clears throat> our solar system. So I change that point of reference. Actually, I change the time coordination of the object, and that is the the first experiment of control time traveling, and it, it, it is actually something which we are doing constantly. I mean, all the time we are doing that time traveling by any experiment in physics, because you do not have any temporal experiments in physics. Every physical experiment is temporal, and uh, time is not uh, uh, just a measure of a process. No, the time is active. Actually, the time is the general law of physics uh, and of uh, physical reality, I would say. So we have, we have uh, uh, that general law. We, we may formulate it as uh, the law of continuity. So the law of continuity constitutes the continuum, and the continuum is a constant present time or eternal present time which we have in, in our human experience every day. I mean, everybody uh, from, the, from the moment of birth to the moment of death experiencing, is experiencing only uh, uh, present time. There is no other time of physical reality. So that is what I was uh, working on. And uh, at this point, I'm, I'm trying to, to get that greater output than input with uh, uh, certain assumptions, presuppositions. One is uh, that uh, electromagnetic spectrum actually is what we call eta. Why? Because there is no empty space. So if I, if I, if I say this is empty space in between my uh, palms, it is not. Actually, it's a standing wave. So uh, we cannot uh, discern or, or, or differentiate uh, space and light, and that is why we, we 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 cannot have a pure space and a pure light on the other side. So we always have that mixture of light and space. And uh, actually, uh, what we have to conclude is uh, that there is a common uh, a structure unit of uh, space and the light, and there is no empty space. Consequently. So what we have is uh, eta, what we call space. Actually, it's eta, and it is full of light and standing waves and the other waves, which are not synchronous. And that is the reason why they're moving. So for example, light. Light uh, uh, has the greatest velocity in the universe, but uh, uh, does, does not spare any fuel. I mean, light with so great great speed light light is going completely free of uh, of uh, of any uh, charge that is something which is obviously interesting fact and from there we have to conclude that the light is a part of space and there is completely different approach to uh, to motion for light and for the for the other objects which have mass so uh, if we say electromagnetic spectrum is an ether, uh, e e ether actually, ether uh, luminoferous ether, I would say, so full of light, then we have the source of energy, which is completely inexhaustible. But what we have to do is to uh, be simultaneous with, its, with that structure. So we have by resonance to uh, make a kind of uh, communication communication channel with ether, and that is the moment when ether starts to emit energy without any limit. And now I'm doing, doing that experiment. I hope that in months or two it will be completely, because I need some, some more items. That's why it, it takes so long, and I have complete con conception. So that, uh, uh, that in months or two, I have two experiments. One is, uh, is a change of oscillation, of, of, the, of the object in additional electromagnetic fields, which is actually the change of uh, time coordination of the object. So that's a time traveling that they have already, and the other, the other experiments is on the way. So I hope in two months, I, I will be able to uh, publish 
theory plus experimental part. So that would be something I hope. Well, that is the best answer I ever heard to the question or the request. Tell us a little bit about yourself. That was great. Thank you so much. We're not going to go back to it. We'll put in the description, you know, more about your background and what brought you to these experiments. But let's, you said we're doing it all the time. And I think what yes. I heard you say, I think the connection, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, is about it depends how we how we look at it, how we think about it. That's how we do time travel all the time. Is that what you were saying? Yes, uh, time. I mean, the nature of time is extrasensory nature. So we do not have a sens sensitivity of time like we have sensitivity of space or or light or whatever whatever else with our five senses. So the point is that our mind is a sense of time and we come to the philosophical level of the approach to the world and when i under understood that i found in euclidean geometry the best uh, geometrical model of time and that is obviously point because point is what has no parts and that is not space i mean simply space has has parts and point has no parts that that uh, negative definition in the beginning of an uh, deductive theory as uh, euclidean geometry is gave me an i an, an idea that the whole uh, science of space and that is geometry is based actually on the main notion which is not space and that is time and uh, in arithmetics i mean as a number i uh, found the chorus co co corresponding uh, model and that is zero. Why, that is, why is it corresponding model uh, for time? Because uh, we are constantly in present time and that present moment is not measurable. What is not measurable is not one, it must be zero. I mean, simply like that. And the, and the, other, and the other reason is that a part of zero equals whole zero. Five times zero is zero, one, zero plus zero plus zero is also zero. So, and uh, that is the, uh, <clears throat> the property of infinity. The part of infinity must equals the whole infinity and infinity must be actual. So at the same moment, infin infinity exists as a whole. You cannot have a part of the infinity plus the other part of the infinity and so on. It is not possible. So we have to have uh, infinity as a wholeness. And that is exactly what we have in the case of uh, constant present time. What proves it is that uh, is constantly present time. There is no other time in, in our experience, which means that time is infinite. And because it is infinite, it cannot move. <laughs> it must be, it must be still. I mean, it cannot. We cannot go anywhere because infinity covers everything, and that is that is uh, from my point point of view very strong logic, which is which cannot be denied. Denied. I mean, simply, simply, if we have infinity, that infinity must uh, have a kind of representation, not uh, not in the world of our sense senses, but but in the world of our uh, philosophical mind. So we can we can say that is time, and the time is the the basis of everything because it's infinite. Everything else, what is finite, is the part of that infinity of time. And now we have mathematics, and when we have mathematics, we have we have to apply mathematics to physics, but not only that, but also to check it. I mean, can we can we prophesy something in physics? Can can we predict? If we can predict, it means that red mathematics is valid. And I can predict with, with my mathematics, which uh, contains only five elements. And now I will tell you which, <coughs> which they are. Uh, first element is uh, zero. So zero, it's, uh, it's a number of time, or uh, geometrically spe speaking, it's point. And, uh, and from there comes mathematics of time. So from zero and point, interesting is 
that in uh, uh, current uh, existing, currently existing uh, mathematics, you, all, you also have in geometry all the drawings, also in art, not only in ge geometry, starts with point. You cannot make any drawing without starting from, from the point, which means that mathematicians and uh, physicists as well, sci scientists in general, and humans in general, they are always using point, but without the consciousness of what point is. And point is actually the general time. I mean, at the, that is actually the, the, what we say eternity, or the, the, that is a picture of time. Actually, it's, it's a point. But uh, why that mathematics is valid? Because we have time included in mathematics as well as a zero. So all the equations comes to zero. So in all the mathematical calculations, we, we, we use zero. And in all mathematical drawings, we, we use points. So we have time included, but without consciousness as what that is. Why? Because philosophy didn't do its job. I mean, <laughs> philosophy should, should explain what that is. And from that, that point, then you can have completely, co completely conscious ma mathematics of, of time. That, that is what, what, what I did, actually ma make it obvious and, and make it clear and explaining actually what is what. So now I have five uh, elements of my mathematics uh, by which I can, can predict uh, uh, physical constants, uh, constants and, and, and calculate without measuring. So that, that is actually a good theory, which can predict without, without uh, taking apparatuses to, to, to measure before that, before measuring. And that is firstly, firstly zero, then uh, one half, and one half, it is not a number. And that, that, that's, that, is a, that, that is a relation in between two halves and one, which we can divide into two halves, and geometry, ge geometrically, two points. And that two points is the radius. And radius is exactly one half of a diameter. So we have zero, we have one half a, a, as a relation, relation in, in between time and space. So with two points, now we, we, we start creating space inside time. Because time is infinite, and now we have radius, which makes, makes uh, uh, sphere and that sphere actually that is the model of of a complete space of space and now we come to one so one is the only one number because two three five six and so on those those are sums we are summing numbers two three five and so on so the only number is number one and we have zero we have one one half we have we have one and then now we have two laws one law is a uh, uh, golden section law. It's 0 0.681 and so on inside, in, in, inside one geometrically and also uh, arithmetically. And also, and, and also we have a uh, number P 3.14159 and so on. That is the, the morphological constant of space. Our space is curved, but according to P, not there is no other the curve because we uh, have to um, respect the minimum and what is minimum minimum is one point and then two points so with two points is the next minimum from one point and that is radius and the uh, radius is completely enough to make uh, to to make sphere and the sphere is uh, is uh, curved by by p so uh, the consequence of, of it uh, is that we have actually space with only three dimensions not the four dimensions at Minkowski, Minkowski thought or, or Einstein thought that, that is too much and that it makes completely mess in understanding and, uh, and the calculations. So uh, why only three dimensions? Because we have two dimensions and that is the surface of the, of the sphere, we have only two dimensions. So the width and, the, and, the, and what is long and what, what is, what, what is uh, uh, wide, and there are two dimensions for that. And the third dimension is the straight line inside and its diameter, and it is a time. So we have uh, internal time of a space, which is one, and its diameter, 
and two dimensions of space, which represented by by p p uh, curvature, which is the relation in between diameter and uh, and the surface of the sphere. So we have space as a sphere, very as a, a unit sphere actually unit sphere because the it can be of any size. That is why it's unit sphere, and the diameter of its sphere is one, and that is simply like that. That is actually only five elements which uh, of generical mathematics, which creates all what we can see as a physical world, and that, that is enough for all the physical constants, and rest is the consequence. So we have zero, we have one half, we have one, we have a uh, golden golden section and we have we have number number p and that's it and if we go uh from uh, the the <clears throat> the golden section or a golden proportion continual proportion or a divine section whatever so if we go go from there if we go outside one we get 1.681 and so on and now what is what is uh, what is the consequence? The consequence that we have Fibonacci uh, Fibonacci series. We have a Fibonacci and Fibonacci series comes to Lucas numbers, and those numbers are directly applicable in biology. So we have inside one, it is atomic world or micro world, and we have outside one, so growing, and that is the world of uh, of uh, living systems and also we have number e and that is the basis of a natural uh, logarithm and that is uh, 2.71 and so on and that that is about that is applicable to uh, social <clears throat> social and historical events for example uh, also in economy so on on the market you have number in 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 banking number e is of extreme Important. So, with actually seven numbers, we can we, you can uh, cover the basis of generical mathematics of nature from where you can get anything what what we need to know in advance, and that is the point. And we can predict. That's that's why why that mathematics is so powerful, and uh, also that is the reason why a human mathematics. Th this mathematics is not human. We are just discovering it. We are not constructing it because in mathematics we have over 80, uh, 80 different uh, uh, different mathematical mathematical constructions. I mean, logically and uh, axiomatically done by a human mind, and those are not exact. So that is the point. We we cannot predict with statistics. We can predict sometimes, sometimes not, and so on. So that is descriptive. It's mathematic mathematics which are describing, and that is not exact one. But this one is which is generating, which is producing. So that's a basic in natural mathematics which are making this world, and that is a completely new new approach. I mean, new. It is not new in the sense that uh, in uh, Babylon uh, or in 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 uh, Sumerian times and so on, you had. Uh, even mathematical religion, so you have you you have that approach to mathematics that mathematics is divine and it's not human, and that is something which I rediscover again, rediscovered again uh, from from myself, and I uh, I hope now it will be it will be uh, proved. I was working it by myself for 35, 40 years already. The greatest uh, discover for me was the Tesla technology. Yeah, I understand that actually time is a logical key to Tesla technology because Tesla is working with the resonance. And what is resonance? It's a technical name for, for simultaneity. So uh, uh, if you if you if you <clears throat> do not have synchronicity, you cannot have physical interaction. Synchronicity is conditio sine qua non, so condition which we cannot avoid for any uh, physical interaction. So time is the basis of, of everything. But now in physics, you do not have hypo hypothesis of time and you have the uh, Einstein, the definition of time, which time is what we see on the clock. I mean, literally, I, it, it's, 
is what, what he said. So time is just a measure. And uh, uh, we have the observer, according to that measure, we can, we, we can, we can let's say, predict what we can observe. But it is not, uh, um, it, it, it is not the most important what we can observe, the most important what is real, what is happening. And then we, from there, what is real, from that uh, uh, assumption, we can uh, uh, induce or we, we can see or calculate what, what what we can observe. So we cannot observation uh, proclaim as a, as a real event. And that's what Einstein did. That's why uh, thinking, philosophical thinking in physics is uh, stagnating for 100 years already. I mean, you, have, you don't have uh, any new theories. You have only, that is very interesting. You have a great development of technology, which is not cover at all, by physical theories. Uh, it's, it started with the transistor. So in transistor, you have the tunnel effect, which is not explained in, in physics, and from the, but transistor we use. So what en engineers did, they, they, they were playing with, the, with different, the, let, let's say, different uh, possibilities. And at a certain moment, they, they si simply made a kind of uh, discovery uh, of some Thing which is working. And if it is working, we don't need theory anymore. We just produce it and sell, and that's it. And that's that's how it happened. That actually we are operating with the very old notions of time and space and mass, notions which are hundred and more years old. And we have extremely new technology with the completely uh, even uh, even with new language. So that new language in it 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 also holds a new. A, a new uh, consciousness behind. I mean, I, I'm speaking about the humanity at the moment of uh, uh, in, <clears throat> informational society, which is already working, and it is a global society in, 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 in informational sense. So we have that, but we are completely unaware of uh, uh, what actually brought it to to humanity, and then that is that, that is some. Uh, hidden understanding, still hidden, but will not be anymore. <laughs> when I discuss, <laughs> publish the theory, I mean, uh, of, of the, these notions of, of time as something we see on the clock. So we see like a moving and that moving we compare with the other moving and we have some numbers and those numbers we say those, those are time. Those are actually are not time. The only number of time is zero, and that is the point. I mean, because we cannot we cannot measure the the, the moment of, of present time, and th that is something which is kicked out uh, from physics. I mean, in philosophical sense, uh, phys physicists do not uh, take that on the account. They don't want to think about that because it make it makes confusion to them. But they don't need it. To think why? Because they use point, they use zero, so no need to, to, to understand it. They use it, it is working, it is okay. But that's why now philosophy, philosophy of nature comes into, into application and ma must, I mean, understand, understand those things. So my uh, approach is uh, uh, completely philosophical, but it does not mean that uh, Galileo Galilei was, he was not a philosopher. He was philosopher, and as a philosopher, he understand a, a free fall and made its first experiments in physics. So from Galileo, we started experimental physics. From philosophy, everything starts from philosophy. I mean, even in everyday life, life, what we really need is philosophical understanding of ourselves and of events. If we, if we that have that understanding uh, we will not make errors i mean we will always always uh, uh, go straight and uh, and uh, in 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 the interest of ourselves i mean our system so we are always always being in, if we know what is environment what are the laws of of, of cosmos then we all always have a harmonization of ourselves with the universe and not this harmonization which Harms our our system. That's it. That is why uh, we need philosophy. We need science 
and to understand nature because now we uh, our technology our science is uh, very developed but it is blind that's that's the point there is no ethics in science which is horrible we cannot now you have a, you have a power a power to destroy world world but you don't know don't know exactly why we should sh shouldn't do that okay we destroy the world now we have a big hole in a in a mountain we can survive 3000 years does not make any sense because because we have the, this uh, little vehicle and that vehicle is planet earth i mean which uh, levitates in, in in the universe and we have to understand our situation as humans, as a, as a li living beings on the planet, as also as a part of the universal harmony of so many worlds where are existing intelligent beings, but they are not interfering in our in our life because it is it is not uh, possible. If they do, because uh, because of the feedback process. If I interfere or if I influence something else, uh, my uh, surrounding or the other person, it 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 gives me back reaction of 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 that influence, which I cannot sometimes predict. Or normally, I, I cannot predict, and that's that's why we need this higher consciousness of the wholeness of, of the in individual as the part of the wholeness and how it is functioning all together. And for that, we need time hypothesis, understanding of time. Without that, we, we will not be able to elevate our consciousness on the, on the necessary, necessary level. Uh, because uh, every um, item or every entity has its own internal time. So we have universal time, which is for the whole uh, uh, universe as a whole, for the, for the whole ether, let's, let's say so. For everything what exists and that universal time uh, is re represents by point and by zero but uh, that that is the that that is the catch if we have mass or we have uh, um, energy or we or we have uh, space then we have something which is long and that what is long it's a space representation of internal time of that object which is very specific and that's what gives us the arrow of time, which we which we think uh, it is existing uh, existing universally. No, it is existing locally, and that is the my contribution to to uh, relativity theory. So what we need we need absolutely the sense of the present time, which Einstein kicked out. So from point to point in space, Einstein claimed. Uh, you have different uh, different local local time, but that local time he did not he did not ascribe to to individual, but to uh, the space as itself, and that is actually actually not true. So we have to have object and internal time and uh, present time, which is which is uh, general, and that is what he kicked out from relativity theory. There is no general present time. There and that is simply wrong. I mean, we have to calculate both, and then from that we can predict. So, I mean, also Einstein was interesting that he actually, uh, I mean, as uh, as was tradition in the whole history of science and and philosophy in human history, that uh, great uh, magician always uh, say, how can immortality be achieved? And he exactly said, if you have a rocket which you can, which which you can travel travel by a uh, uh, light velocity, you will become immortal. So he had everything what what uh, old alchemists had thousand years ago. I mean, in in his uh, uh, arsenal arsenal of of the persuasion instruments, <laughs> immortality, fantastic. But that's it. That, that is a kind of uh, a fantastic story, and that is not physics, unfortunately. But it helped very much people to start to believe Einstein because they, I mean, if if Jesus said, "I am immortal and uh, I am resurrected," then Einstein said it is also possible by science, but you need a rocket to travel 
by speed of light, no problem with uh, time flow, <laughs> no flow of time. <laughs> Do you think that's what Jesus was saying then when he said, I'm immortal? Is that, do you think that he was touching on what, uh, what you're telling us now and what quantum physics has been trying to tell us? But he said, actually, he never said, I'm immortal, of course. Although what I think and uh, my uh, physical theory of soul, which I also, I mean, had in, in, in notes, it is like this. For example, we we have a body, and body is a, a atomic molecular structure. Okay. And what is what 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 is the energy which leaves the body in the moment of death? So in the in the moment of death, uh, we are losing twenty one gram of mass. It can be measured. It was me yeah. measured thousand and maybe hundred thousand times. Okay. But if you have spectrophotometer, you can also see that in that moment when you are losing mass, 21 grams, you emit extremely, I, I mean, uh, uh, people who, I mean, person who is dying, so uh, is emitting uh, extremely high energetic emission. And what is that? And that is soul. So soul is electromagnetic field, which is actually synch synchronized with the atomic molecular body during life. And at the moment of that, it, it starts you know, to, to emancipate. And that is, the, that is the moment when we have soul, and the soul is, uh, is electromagnetic. Uh, I would say it's, it's a kind of sphere, actually, uh, which exists in the, they say, astral, astral level, but actually it's electro. Uh, electromagnetic spectrum, or other words, it is uh, ether, luminiferous ether. So that liberated from from the body, soul lives in in ether. It exists further, and the body now, because the, there is no the organization moment. So, so soul is organization instruction for the atomic uh, atomic molecular <clears throat> structure of a of a body. When you can fertilize, fertilize the cell, from that moment you get that program, and now comes a, after, I don't know, 20 years comes body of 100 kilo. So according directly to that instruction, and that is a time program in the genome, very simple like that. And what we have about uh, is, uh, the DNA, about the DNA we have, we have electromagnetic field. So, uh, so actually that electromagnetic field about DNA, it's a hardware and this is a software. So the, our soul is a software for a hardware, but that software gives hardware the program of developing. And soul is electromagnetic and the body is, is, uh, is atomic, uh, atomic molecular. And now we have a kind of uh, certain ground to understand the whole, the whole thing. So, uh, and we have also what we call spirit. So in theology, what we call spirit, I call consciousness in science. That is absolutely the same. Spirit is not, is not uh, completely clear. So how can you define spirit at all in philosophy, in theology? No way. So we, you have to believe that there is spirit. Nobody knows exactly what that is. But for consciousness, I have ontological definition. And that is the continuity. And that is the moment. So continuity is a kind of a spiritual principles. I would say spiritual because of the theological, the, the, theological approach. So we have, you, you have a principle of continuity, which constitutes continuum. So uh, a consciousness actually creates time. And that is the that, that is the scientific moment of of the whole whole thing. So now now we can start research. Before that, if, if you don't have that clear, you cannot research. To research what spirit? To research spirit means nothing. I mean, to to nobody for so many thousand years. So you have a continuity, the law of continuity, and that is that is a principle. Of, it's a spiritual principle from where it comes comes what we call constant present time or, or eternity, which is entity. So continuum is entity and continuity 
is the property of that entity, but that property precedes the entity. So if we do not have the law of continuity, we cannot have continue. And that's the moment. So spiritual world, other words, is preceding material world. So everything is clear, but I just change, uh, change the, the terminology that is extremely, uh, uh, like Confucius would say, old philosophers said, you need to understand the word. I mean, the, the content of the notion, otherwise you cannot think. And that is the moment, the moment you can start thinking. If you say, okay, you have continuity, you have continuum, you have cons consciousness, you have now constant present time, and now we can think about time and about consciousness as, as well. Because if there is no synchronicity, there is no consciousness. Now you have, I, 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 I speak about individual cons consciousness, awareness, actually, individual awareness, better, better than Cox. So consciousness is for the whole universe and awareness is for individual object or individual being. And what we call awareness, it comes to, it, it, it is not continuity, it is synchronicity. So synchronicity is based upon uh, internal, internal time and internal time actually is a specific time of an ob object or being. And now you have the whole uh, apparatus to, 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 to think about consciousness, to think about time and we can predict. That is the moment. I mean, uh, what, what, what does mean uh, that you prove something. You prove something if you have a theory which can predict uh, the result of your experience. If that you can predict, it means the theory is okay. And that is exactly what my theory can. I mean, I'm speaking about physical constants, which I can predict without measuring 14 of them. Yeah. So, what are, oh, as we, it's a lot to take in, but this is a story that seems to make perfect sense. In fact, it's quite amazing in its simplicity. It's such a complex thing. And yet, actually, it's really very simple. Exactly. But that is the point. I mean, nature is not compli complicated. Nature is always extremely simple because it is working on the minimum of change or on the minimum of energy, for example. Uh, nature uh, does not uh, spare more more energy than it is necessary for any process. Always exactly what is what is uh, necessary to for something to be done. So the, and what people are doing, people are projecting their thoughts on the nature, making mess in thinking, and also making a kind of a wall of ignorance which you cannot penetrate. I mean. If I, uh, if I start ascribe to nature what I think about nature, it is an unbelie unbelievable process. I mean, where I cannot come to the truth at all. I mean, that is the point. So what I do when I think, I clear my mind. I kicked out all the secondary thoughts so that I can understand or can get an image on what is really happening in the in the higher worlds i mean higher worlds uh, higher worlds uh, higher levels of existence so we have material worlds uh, world which is uh, atomic uh, molecule and so on and then we have or these objects so the classical classical picture which are seen by our eyes every day and then you have uh, this ether level and that ether level is luminiferous ether it is the, the the level of light and space actually energy light and space from where we are getting mass so mass is just a, that's a lower level of existence of of uh, ether ether units and that's all i mean so we have material world we have we have ether and then we have actually uh indeed we have space we have energy we have mass and from there we have time and space and finally we have only time because time is uh, basic infinity from where uh, all this comes and that's come i mean and that is that is actually how how simply simply it is and uh, what is most inter interesting is that all that is 
absolutely obvious in uh, secondary school mathematics for first, first and second and third grade of mathematics tell you everything, but we don't know what is what. For example, you see, I mean, when you say uh, point, point can be artifact or real. Okay, if it is artifact, then it does not matter. We can do anything as artifact. I mean, that's that's art. But uh, our human imagination, better mm. say. But okay, if it is real, if point is real, I mean, the, the picture of something which is in physical reality represented uh, physically, then what is it? Cannot be space, no no parts, cannot be mass, cannot be energy, of course, which should be, which is almost nothing, like we would say. Okay, but what if it is time? <laughs> that was my, my beginning, of course. If it is time, then you, you see the consequences of, of, of that uh, posture. And then we see actually that it is working. So. How is it taken this long? Yeah, how is it? How is it that this, like you said, it's all there. It's just that the dots haven't been joined together in the right way. How, how has it taken this so long for somebody like you to come along and say, actually, when we look at it through this lens? But because of, uh, together, of education, school, you know, in school, you, you have a kind of restriction of your mind, which uh, uh, always uh, is aimed to complication. So if you know more and more, and now you, you, for example, express yourself in very complicated equations or in a, in a very sophisticated language and so on, so you are intellectual, you are a professor, you are some, it's actually you are more and more uh, uh, far away from the truth. And that's <laughs> what I understood it, but I understood it, you know, well, in a Buddhist, in a, in a, in a tenth Upanishad, actually, that is the philosophical uh, the philosophical scripture of Vedas, and then understand that actually I must start from the beginning. I have to delete all the knowledge I had if I want to understand really the basics. Otherwise, it's okay if you want to come to let's say function in a society so that you are intellectual with a very complicated and high sophisticated <laughs> expression of uh, wrong wrong thoughts <laughs> that's okay <laughs> but that is not the point the point is actually that you start from nothing and uh, if you because uh i also understood the, the the great thing in the bible when i when i uh, read the the bible so in the tent where uh moses was uh discussing with the god he asked at a certain moment, Moses asked God, who are you? And he said, I am the one who is who. So I understand that actually the, what we call existence. So the existence, uh, that, is, that is the basic understanding of everything. So there is nothing beyond the existence. Or we can say, okay, we have a transcendental being who created the existence as a general, okay, from my point of view, the creator of the universe is not understandable by human mind. That is, after all, what I concluded. But he, I mean he, creator, he made infinity as the basis of everything. And our mind can understand infinity, can understand time, can understand everything uh, what is uh, uh, functioning of that infinity or parts of the inner parts, intrinsic parts of the of the infinity? That's what we can understand, and that is the subject of science. So we can do by science very, very much. I mean, almost everything what we need, and what we really need is to fight <laughs> illness, to fight uh, uh, death, and to fight, fight aging. Aging, illness, death, uh, those are the, the greatest enemies of humanity because uh, uh, the suffering comes from there. And that is what we can uh, fight or can overcome by understanding infinity and time. Do we at all need to understand God and existence as, as it is? 
Why, if we are uh, uh, fragments of God, actually by our existence, we understand God, but not logically. So we, are, we, we cannot logically understand the existence, but it does not matter. I mean, it's not really which, which matters our mind, which can save us from suffering, understanding time. I mean, specifically understanding infinity, which is the only one physical infinity, and that is time. If you understand that, we can go out of suffering, and that is exactly what Buddha was trying to do. But he did not succeed because he was not a scientist. <laughs> Only science can help us. <laughs> okay. So I was going to ask you in, in, yes. in, to wind up about the implications of your learning so far, but you've just done that without me even asking you. You've answered that question that it, the implications are on how we experience life in terms of our, our suffering or not, and in terms of how we age and death and how we, how we experience that. So these are pretty big things. And I have to say, I have rarely looked forward to the second part of an interview more than I look forward to this one, because I'm <laughs> hoping that we can get together again, Velimir, and talk about those things, like the impact of all this on us. What does it mean for us? And yes, beyond understanding the something we cannot understand, focus on, you know, work at hand, the game of life and how to play it, because that's what we're here for, right? Yes, absolutely. We should talk about ethics. So it is a, a cosmological ethics, which is extremely important to understand. Why? Because we are still in, in, in tradition of wars, of uh, getting wealth or, or getting power over people, and that is completely obsolete. I mean, we are now making a new civilization on the earth, which is based on scientific understanding. And uh, that, is, uh, that is not against humanity. It's not, it's not transhumanism, as people think. Because if we have ethical moment in what we are producing and in our philosophical approach to, to the world, then there, there, we can fight evil, what we call evil. I mean, that is the point, that it's a moment of consciousness. We have to, let's say, to elevate our consciousness on the, on, on, on the level from, from uh, where we can overcome evil, because evil is relative. And we, we will talk, talk about that specifically, I mean, ne ne next time, I hope. And uh, so that people see the perspective of, of, the, of, of scientific approach to God and his, and, and, uh, uh, and, and his deed, I mean, and, 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 the, and the world. So that, that is the moment. And not, you, you know, people are, let's say, they, they are uh, fear of science. And that is absolutely, I mean, uh, does not make sense because who actually helped to people, to people if science didn't, and only science helped. I mean, that is the moment. But now we need spirituality in science. So we have spiritual science, so the, the moment when we are going to recognize uh, the, the spiritual world or metaphysics beyond physics, beyond uh, technology, beyond uh, robotics, uh, as, as uh, let's say, when they say robot, they say, okay, it's a perfect soldier. It's not only soldier, come on. <laughs> we can, can, because in a robot, we have uh, some cosmological laws which are serving us. Why? Why serving us? Serving us in a way that if we are evil, the robot is evil. If we are good, the robot is good. I mean, that's simple like that. So we have to, to, think, to think on the cosmological way by, by ourselves and about ourselves and about all the productions of, of science, all the discoveries. Because the scientific discovery is uh, ethically neutral. It is not evil or good. It is just what it is. God gives us only, only the laws, and those laws are covering all the consequences, good and, and bad. But we are in a free will of, of, a, of, of a scientist or of everybody is to choose what is good. And because we also have freedom, and that's the, 
that's the point, I mean, which we have to count in, uh, in, in our critics of science. If we, if we are critical, uh, we cannot critical <clears throat> make, let's say, uh, criticize science because we are actually criticizing evil in humans, not the science. So that, that's the point. Now we are going to make a new world, which is much, much better than this previous one. Yes, we are. And I cannot wait to talk about it. It's been such a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much. And Thank you. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Nice vibration you have. Thank you so much. You too. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh.